Hello YouTubes! Welcome back Haunt Fam. So today I've got a bunch of plastic horns here. I've got the ones you get from Party City that are kind of hollow plastic. And this one's kind of cool, but it's plastic and that's great for lightweight stuff. Um, I've got this one that's foam. I think I got this from Myers or something and I foam filled it. But again, it's just a kind of a standard run of the mill horn. So today I want to try and tackle making a really nice set of horns. Okay, YouTubes. So what I have here is a pair of ram horns I got off Etsy some years ago. I've had them on my bench forever as a reminder for me to go ahead and try and mold these things. I mean, they're awesome looking. They got a lot of cool ridges and to think these are basically just a giant fingernail. I mean, the rams would be running around the mountains smashing their heads into each other with these things, you know, like totally gangster. Um, so I thought this is what I want to try and mold today. Uh, I did have to fill a little hole so that some uh, hot glue in there. It's, to, uh, as a core sample, when they take stuff like that, they check it. So uh, I made up this little jig out of one of my old wall boards. I got a one inch dowel. And I think this is what we're gonna use to, uh, to mold on. Anything that hits the floor or it hits the bench should peel up, so we should be okay. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and put a coat of Polytech Ease 2500 on these uh, as a mold release agent since there are so many ridges. I did consult uh, Lloyd over at uh, Dead and Yard Haunts. I'll put a link his channel below. Uh, Lloyd uses this uh, silicone a lot. He's had a lot of great luck with it. I uh, got this from Biddy Mold Supply. I also talked to Mitch, the owner, and said, hey, I got a pair of ram's horns. What do I use to mold these suckers? So he was like, this is what you want to use. This will be the best uh, bet for your product. So I said, okay, Mitch. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing ready. We're going to do two, two coats, maybe three coats. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and hit these guys with the coat of uh, mold release agent. And then we're going to mix up some silicone. And we're going to do our first layer of our brush on mold. Okay, YouTube. So I went ahead and put about uh, nine ounces of part B in here. We're going to go ahead and add... Another nine ounces of part A, and this stuff is pretty syrupy, so look at that. So we're going to go all the way up to 19 ounces, and then we're going to stir, and we're going to brush our first coat on. Now it should take about half an hour, 35 minutes to dry or so, because it's nice and warm outside today. We're looking at almost close to 90 today, so... Shouldn't be that long between coats. If I were to mix this and pour it in a mold, the uh, Platsil 7111, it would take about four hours for demold time. So I've got both our parts in there. Kind of a bluey green color. We're gonna mix them real good. It says I've got about 20 minutes uh, mix time before this stuff starts to kick and harden up and gel. So I'm gonna mix the hell out of it and we're gonna start brushing on. Okay, YouTube, looks like we're pretty well mixed up to this nice kind of turquoise color. I'm scraping the sides and the bottom. And uh, we're going to go ahead and brush our first coat on. We're going to give it a whirl and see what we get. So I think we're good. That's about our consistency right there. So we're not going to plow uh, silicone on. We just want to do like maybe a detail coat. And I want to try and get in all those little cracks and crevices and those little splits and chips and all that stuff. So we're gonna brush on both these horns. I got about 20 minutes, I think, before this stuff starts to dry. I wanna just kinda get down in all them cracks. I'll put my cup down here for a little excess. And I'm gonna try and brush the direction of the growth rings to try and really get that stuff buried in there because this is our first coat, our detail coat. Okay, YouTubes. So it's been about, uh, yeah, maybe 30, 35 minutes. Still kind of a soft, goopy mess. Looks like it's starting to get sticky. So, can't do my second coat just yet, so you know what that means. Okay, YouTube, so I think we're ready for our second coat. I've got some uh, tin thicks here, which is just a couple of drops. They want you to add it to part B. Mix that up first, then top off with part A. So we can do our second coat, and this should thicken up the silicone to make a beefier, thicker coat now that our detail coat is on. It's still a little tacky, but I think we're good to go ahead and put our second coat on and start brushing on. So we're going to put just a couple of drops in, and that should be all we need. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this. Then I'm going to add another uh, 9 ounces of part A, and we're going to start brushing on again our second coat. Okay, YouTube, so we are mixed up. I added part A to the part B with the 10 thick thickener in there. And man, if this stuff ain't like friggin' peanut butter, look at that. 
So, ding, fries are done. I think we're ready to go ahead and start brushing on our second coat, our thickened coat, and it should beef up these horns some more. And we'll see if we need a third coat or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip in and just brush on, same as before. Well, that's like a paste now. Woo, baby. All right, I'm gonna knock out these two horns and then uh, I'll give you a little update and see if we're gonna go to a third coat or not. Okay, YouTubes, so our second coat's pretty tacky. Just like the first one was, it moves around a little bit. So I went ahead and mixed up a last batch. I'm gonna do one third coat. I got this thickened up just like the last coat. I'm gonna go ahead and probably just, I think I'm just gonna use the spatula and just kinda smooth it on like this. And I might take a brush at the end and drag a brush across it just to give some little streaks for uh, our fiberglass jacket mold to uh, grab onto. But I'm gonna go ahead and probably just trowel this out with a, just a paint stick. And then we're gonna be ready to move on to a fiberglass jacket. Okay, YouTube, so we are back. It's been about 24 hours. I went over the molds. They're still kind of uh, squishy. It's a really kind of uh, squishy silicone, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, my other stuff is pretty thick, so uh, that's what we're working with. So I went ahead and I shaved off any little nubbins uh, to try and give a slicker uh, mother mold for this thing. And so for the mother mold, we're gonna go to trusty fiberglass, uh, Bondo fiberglass, and I've got some fleas. This stuff is really, I mean, it's it's thin, but it stretches. And this is what they make uh, stereo uh, uh, cabinets out of for like cars to make custom uh, stereo enclosures and stuff. So we're going with fleas. Now this stuff is super thirsty, it will suck it up, but the same token, it's also thick, so it should give us a hard uh, mother shell for this thing. So I've already went ahead and cut up a couple of long strips, and my plan is to go ahead and use our fiberglass to make our shell, and we're gonna brush the whole horn out with fiberglass, and then we're gonna wrap this around, and basically just make it stick like a glue, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna brush right on top of the fleece to make sure it's impregnated and makes a nice hard shell around this horn. Uh, in theory, it should work. In reality, we'll find out together if it works or not. So I've got about 10 ounces of fiberglass here to start with. I'm gonna go ahead and add 10 drops per ounce, so I just go a squeeze. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's hot today, so that's plenty enough. That's probably overkill, but it works for me. Ooh, lost our lid. Okay, so we're gonna mix that up. It should go pretty fast, and again, I've got doors open. This stuff will make you lightheaded. It's uh, not for the faint at heart, so always have a good airway, and make sure you're doing this outside if you absolutely can. So for this, I'm gonna bomb this sucker out, and then I'm running my ass outside, and I'll come back when it's dry, and I'll do the other horn. And so for now, we got our fiberglass in, and once you put that hard on, you can kind of feel the stick kind of, uh, kind of start to drag in the fiberglass, then you know you're good. So we're nice and mixed up, and if you wanna be pretty, you can add some mica to it or whatever, it doesn't matter, you can treat it just like it's a regular resin. So I got our brush. Tear off any loose little bristles, just because I hate little flyaways in my damn work. So let's go ahead and be generous and brush this whole fiberglass mold out. So it is pretty squishy stuff, which is kind of shocking because most of the other stuff I use is pretty uh, pretty solid stuff. It doesn't get, have this much stretch, so it gives me hope that when we pull this thing apart, I might be able to peel the horn out of there and pull the whole skin off without doing a zigzag cut. Again, we'll find out together after this uh, part of the mold is dry. So basically we're gonna use this fiberglass resin as a glue, kind of brush it on really heavy and liberal. Okay, that's good for now. And then we're gonna take our long fleece, we'll start at the bottom, and just kind of wrap our way around this curly horn. I don't have to be all the way at the bottom, but, uh, and I don't wanna to be too thick either. I don't have to go on super tight, Basically just like wrapping a cast or something, I guess, what the doctors do. I don't know. Okay. And I want to leave a tip at the end because I might pop a hole in the end of this thing as a little vent. Uh, again, don't know. Kind of a new strategy here for being able to get this thing out of the mold once it's in. And I'm not trying to wrap too tight. Just get it up against the horn where it's not like a band-aid band-aid, but tight enough. So I got this kind of stuck. I'll add a little more here at the end, but since we've got it down here, I'll show you guys, and we're just gonna go ahead and fiberglass over the top. We don't have to go too heavy, because this stuff is thirsty, it will suck it up. So I'll go from the top, and it'll eventually it'll work its way down to the lower parts of the underside of the horn. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and try and knock this whole mold out. I'm gonna add another piece, probably up to about here or so, because when we put rigid foam in this, it's gonna wanna swell. So we've gotta have this mother mold on here to make sure that this thing doesn't get distorted and give us a warped, crazy looking horn. Or maybe we'll do that too, just for the hell of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock off this mold, both horns, and I'm gonna show you guys when we come back uh, what it looks like, and we're gonna see if we can't demold and get our original horn back out of this mold. Okay, YouTubes, so I've had these guys sitting in the sun. I did go ahead and brush a second tight coat over everything just again to have a nice little skin coat. And eventually I may sand it down, I don't know, um, and smooth it out a little bit and refine it. Uh, it depends, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have to cut these apart. There's no way in hell our horn is gonna slip out of there being a curved horn with the radius that's curved to the outside like that. So I took a pencil or a magic marker and I made a little line. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna split this thing down the center or side to side with a high speed cutoff wheel, just like a cast. It's gonna be the easiest way to get it off. So to review, we went ahead, we put three coats of our 7111 on. We did one uh, really tight skim detail coat. We did two coats that were thickened with a thickener, 10 thicks from uh, Bitty Mold. And we went ahead, we used our fleece and fiberglass resin to wrap and make a mother mold out of. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go take this outside I'm going to get some safety equipment on because now's the time when you're cutting into fiberglass. It's horrible. When there's fiberglass mixed with fibers, it's horrendous. So I got to mask up, clean up. I'm going to take these guys outside and I'm going to cut off right down the center and try and split this mold in two pieces. We can lift it out, pull our horn out, and then try and cast one today. So I'm taking it outside. Okay, YouTubes. So I got one horn uh, demolded. This is our basic uh, little mother mold. You can see it's some fuzz in there where the fiberglass didn't bite in. So I'll probably burn that away and I may do one uh, fiberglass brush and coat later just to smooth out the whole inside of the mold. And that'll help it uh, do a cleaner, uh, cleaner job. So I'm down to the last horn. I can show you kind of spiral cut all the way around. I sort of pram with it on a screwdriver. And I think I've got some areas where the... Where the... Ah. Come on now. I got some areas where the fiberglass, again, didn't soak in. So I'm just kind of cutting those now to pull them apart. And then we can crack it apart like a lobster shell. Ah, come on now. Let me go get the damn uh, screwdriver again. Of course, it's 90 degrees today. I'm dripping sweat like a freaking hooker in church. Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay, YouTubes, so I finally got the shell crack loose. Again, little fuzzies in here that uh, I didn't get uh, fire enough fiberglass in, but that'll be okay, because I'll burn those out, I think, and then I'll go back and I'll put a nice wet coat of fiberglass in here, real tight coat, and that'll seal up the inside of our mold. So we've got our horn out. This is the longer one. This is the one I'm a little bit more worried about. Uh, so let's see if we can kind of de-skin this thing. I mean, this silicone is really stretchy, so maybe it'll de-glove, I don't know. Of course, I probably should have started something easier to mold with than a, a friggin' ram's horn. Hopefully this doesn't tear. But I mean, you can see all the ridges and stuff it picked up. The silicone's great, man. So thanks to Lloyd and Bitty Mold. Let's see if I can get it out of here. A little more. Just try and peel it back. Slide it down. Gotta say, it is really stretchy silicone. I mean, ugh. I gotta get a little more on there. I wonder if I should have greased the outside of this thing to help it slide back on itself more. Okay, YouTube, so I finally popped it loose. I got our original horn back. There's a couple of pieces of silicone in there. I'll dig those out. Uh, but I did go ahead and tear a big old hole in there. I don't know if I can patch that somehow. Do fill some of it with some, uh, some foam and then try and brush on top of it. We'll see. So I'm gonna let this sit for a second. And now hopefully I can do the shorter horn and it won't be so bad. So I'm going to demold this and then we'll get the clamshells back on taped up and ready to run some rigid foam and see what happens. Okay YouTube, I got this other horn loose. What a pain in the freaking ass. A bit off way more than I could chew. I got a couple of holes in there where the mold got thin. So I'm going to try and clamshell all these guys back together. Then we're going to mix up some rigid foam and see what happens. Okay, YouTubes, so we got a rigid foam poured up. We got equal parts A and B. This is already a train wreck at this point, but like Lloyd Kirkpatrick would say, run it. 
Let's mix these parts together, dump in, and find out what happens. The worst I could do is derail the rest of this train. So I'm gonna go ahead and put A into B. We're gonna mix like crazy. And we're gonna see what happens. There's some tears. Molds don't fit together well. So we're gonna find out. Let it rip. All right. So we gotta be able to get this in. I'm gonna pour roughly half in here, half in this other horn, maybe a little more on this one. Could be overkill, I don't know. And then we gotta rotate these guys around so we can bottom out. Okay, YouTube, looks like our rigid foam is cured. It's been about 25 minutes or so. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and demold these guys off camera because there's gonna be a ton of colorful demonetizing words that would embarrass a sailor. So. I'll come back and show you what we got. Okay, YouTube, so I started out with these two beautiful ram's horns that I got off Etsy a couple years ago. Uh, they're stunning gorgeous. I tried to recreate these. Uh, when I was demolding the rigid foam ones, I tore the hell out of the mold even more, so this guy is basically a goner. So back to the drawing board. I did get these two guys, basically ram-like structures. Not perfect, nothing close to what I wanted, so I'm gonna call this an epic fail. I tried, uh, maybe I was too thick on the silicone, I think I was a little thin in some of my little areas on the underside, so those are some of the areas that tore on the other horns, so can't win them all. Uh, I got two horns out of the whole thing that I can kind of probably patch together and use for something, but uh, I don't take the feet too easy. I'm going to get back on the horse and try and remold these things again and do a different route and maybe a better mother shell. I don't know. So uh, if you guys get a chance, man, go check out Lloyd over at Dead on Yard Haunt. Uh, Lloyd uses the same silicone. He makes a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I'll, like I said, I'll link him below. Go check my brothers in a trio of terror. Vic over at Monster Misfits and Dave at the Weird Kid Show channel, guys. We're doing non-stop projects and non-stop fails if we can. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you got any comments for me or clues or tips on how not to fall on my face, uh, just leave them in the comments below. And until I see you guys again, man, keep it evil. I know, little wolf man. No Krampus. No goat mask. No trolls. No tauntauns.